Why is the Church of the Starry Wisdom named as such? In H.P. Lovecraft's 1936 story titled The Hunter of the Dark, the Starry Wisdom cult, also called the Church of the Starry Wisdom, used an ancient relic, the Shining Trapezohedron, to summon a being known as the Hunter of the Dark. For unlimited knowledge of the universe, he demanded terrible sacrifice. The church is called the Starry Wisdom because these people were literally receiving wisdom from the stars, from Nyarlathotep, one of the outer gods. In A Song of Ice and Fire, Melisandre hears the whisperings of the flames. Arion Damp Hair hears a voice from the waters. The children of the forest sing the Song of Earth. Someone has to speak for the stars. According to ancient myth, the Bloodstone Emperor brought about the long night when he usurped his own sister. He was said to have set aside his old gods to worship a black stone that had fallen from the sky. He was said to have practiced all manner of dark arts, which included torture and necromancy. Most importantly, he was claimed to be the first high priest of the Church of the Starry Wisdom. It seems as though the Bloodstone Emperor encountered some Lovecraftian type being and made a similar knowledge in exchange for sacrifice deal to the one the Church of the Starry Wisdom made in the Lovecraft story The Haunter of the Dark. Throughout the A Song of Ice and Fire books, Danny has received messages from Quaith in the forms of dreams and apparitions. Quaith provides scenarios with prophecies and cryptic instructions. One of the most famous of these prophecies, which is repeated several times, is To go north, you must journey south. To reach the west, you must go east. To go forward, you must go back. And to touch the light, you must pass beneath the shadow. So what do these cryptic instructions mean? First, we have to decipher why Quaith is speaking to Daenerys at all. Based on several threads of evidence, I have come to the conclusion that Quaith is a part of a larger organization whose shadow operations have global implications. I'm talking about, of course, the Church of the Starry Wisdom. In a sidebar in the world of Ice and Fire, according to the Annals of Ashai, the Valyrians were given dragons by a people from a place called the Shadow, who were so ancient they had no name. These mysterious people also taught the Valyrians, who were nothing but goat herders at the time, all the legendary Valyrian magical knowledge. Before the doom of Valyria happened, Daenys the Dreamer, whose name is quite similar to Daenerys, had a premonition of Valyria's fate. Because of this vision, House Targaryen was saved. 400 years later, and Daenerys seems to be a spiritual successor to Daenys. Daenerys also has prophetic dreams, but as I said before, Daenerys' dreams are likely from Quaith, who also tells Daenerys that she is from a place called the Shadow. Quaith seems likely to be from the same shadow as these ancient people who taught the Valyrians magic, and it also seems as though these ancient ones likely sent the vision to Daenys the Dreamer that foretold the doom of Valyria. To go even further, it seems as though Quaith has done with Daenerys exactly what the ancient shadow people did. Through Daenys' dreams, Quaith gave her instructions on how to birth dragons. The ritual was laid out in Daenys' mind, though she did not fully understand why she was doing what she did. So if Quaith is a part of this group from the Shadowlands, what suggests that this is the Church of the Star Wisdom? To understand this, we have to look at the language Martin uses when Quaith is communicating with Daenerys. In Dany's final dream in A Game of Thrones, before she wakes knowing that she must light the pyre, George R. R. Martin gives us this line. After that, for a long time, there was only the pain, the fire within her, and the whispering of stars. She woke to the taste of ashes. The whispering of stars. That phrasing suggests starry wisdom because Danny is hearing a voice from the stars, and after which she wakes with knowledge of birthing dragons. She is literally receiving starry wisdom. In A Dance with Dragons, when Quaith appears to Daenerys, we get this sequence. She dreamed. All her cares fell away from her, and all her pains as well and she seemed to float upward into the sky. She was flying once again, 
spinning, laughing, dancing as the stars wheeled around her and whispered secrets in her ear. To go north, you must journey south. To reach the west, you must go east. To go forward, you must go back. To touch the light, you must pass beneath the shadow. Quaith? Danny called. Where are you, Quaith? Then she saw. Her mask is made of starlight. Again, here, Daenerys receives wisdom from the stars. In a dream, Danny floats into the sky and dances amongst the stars. Quaith's mask itself is made of starlight. Again, Danny receives knowledge from the stars. So if Quaith is tied to an organization, the starry wisdom seems like the best bet right now. So if Quaith is from the Church of the Starry Wisdom, where is the church and what does it want? As far as where it is, the obvious answer is the Shadow by Ashai, and this is not just because this is where Quaith claims to come from, but also because this is the place where Melisandre has visited. Take another look at that quote from Daenerys' dream. After that, for a long time, there was only pain, the fire within her, and the whispering of stars. She woke to the taste of ashes. If that sounds familiar to you, then you are not mistaken. This is from Melisandre, A Dance with Dragons. The fire was inside her, an agony, an ecstasy filling her, searing her, transforming her. Seeing was never as simple as those words suggested it. It was an art, and like all arts it demanded mastery, discipline, study, pain, that too. Relor spoke to his chosen ones through blessed fire, in a language of ash and cinder and twisting flame, that only a god could truly grasp. Daenerys speaks of pain and fire within her. When she wakes, she is transformed and has the strength to do things she never imagined. Melisandre also mentions that Relor spoke to his chosen few through a language of ash and cinder and twisting flame. Danny wakes with the taste of ashes in her mouth, and when she steps into the pyre, the fire takes on magical characteristics and becomes almost alive in a way that is quite similar to Melisandre's visions in the fires. The flames were so beautiful, the loveliest thing she had ever seen, each one a sorcerer robed in yellow and orange and scarlet, swirling long smoky cloaks. She saw crimson fire lions and great yellow serpents and unicorns made of pale blue flame. She saw fish and foxes and monsters, wolves and bright birds and flowering trees, each more beautiful than the last. She saw a horse and a great gray stallion limed in smoke, its flowing mane a nimbus of blue flame. Further, Melisandre is not only a red priestess, but a shadow binder as well, same as Quaith, and according to the world of ice and fire, it is only shadow binders that have the courage to venture up river into the heart of darkness in the shadow. We have Quaith acting as an agent to the Church of the Starry Wisdom, who are based in the Heart of Darkness in the Shadow. We have Daenerys, who is receiving messages from the Starry Wisdom, which fill her with fire and transform her through pain. We have Melisandre, who is also transformed through pain, but instead receives whisperings from the fire. But at the same time, Melisandre has ties to the Shadow, because she is a Shadowbinder with knowledge that no other in her order possesses. Could it be that while Melisandre thinks she is in communication with Relor, she is actually in communication with the Starry Wisdom? The Church obviously works in ways which are difficult to understand, but if they could directly make things happen from afar, Quaith wouldn't simply give Daenerys subtle clues, she would tell her exactly what to do. Instead, Quaith is only telling Daenerys exactly what she needs to hear at certain times. But there are still two lingering questions. What does the Church of the Starry Wisdom want? And what do Quaith's cryptic instructions mean? In the beginning of this video, I mentioned the Bloodstone Emperor, who legend tells us started the Church of the Starry Wisdom. He too received knowledge from the stars, seemingly from some being that came from the sky, some entity that fell with the Black Stone and lives through it. 
I think this being still remains, and in fact lives at the heart of darkness. Now we have to figure out how much of Quaid's instructions are literal and how much are metaphorical. The first part, to go north you must journey south, to reach the west you must go east, could be considered as literal. Assuming Westeros is a round planet, either direction eventually would lead to its opposite. To go north you must journey south could be taken figuratively as well. In Danny's final chapter in A Game of Thrones, north and south are compared to ice and fire. They laid them north to south, from ice to fire. That being considered, Quaith could be telling Daenerys that before she can fight the others, she must complete her transition into a true dragon. This interpretation also adds weight to Quaith imploring that Daenerys remember who she is and suggesting that the dragons still do at the end of A Dance with Dragons. The second part of the instruction, to go forward you must go back and to touch the light you must pass beneath the shadow, seems to me to suggest that in order for Daenerys to succeed with her destiny, she must learn the knowledge of the past. She must go back and in order to touch the light, this knowledge, she must pass beneath the shadow. She must go into the Shadowlands and into the Heart of Darkness. So those are Quaid's cryptic instructions to Daenerys, but there is still the final question. What does the Church of the Starry Wisdom and the Force they worship want? It would seem that the Valyrians delivered the wrong version of history. Dragons did not originate in the Fourteen Flames, but in the Shadow, where they have never stopped existing. Only this explains why Bran saw dragons stir in the East in the beginning of A Game of Thrones. It is claimed that the Bloodstone Emperor started the Long Night by killing his sister, but ultimately what evidence is there that he was as evil as they say? In my opinion, the evidence that we have suggests that the Children of the Forest started the Long Night when some faction of them broke off and besieged a cold power in the north. This power brought the winter and gave them strength that they never had before, turning them into the Others, the Frozen She as George R. R. Martin called them. All of this would have had to have happened around the same time that the Bloodstone Emperor was said to take the throne from his sister and worship a stone from the sky which gave him knowledge. I put forth that the Bloodstone Emperor did not start the Long Night, but in fact ended it. If you are familiar with my grand game theory, then you can probably already see the threads of where this is going. A force in the north that gives power, a black stone in the far east that gives knowledge. The cold god that turned the children into the others gave them the power to create a winter that never ended and a darkness that covered the globe. This was felt everywhere. Perhaps whatever spoke to Bloodstone through that stone told him how to stop it, told him how to end the long night. It told him how to fight the cold and dark through fire and light. The very same light that Daenerys must touch, beneath the shadow. I believe that Bloodstone went to the shadow, found a dragon, and became the first dragon rider. He then used this dragon to stop the others which marched out of the Grey Waste. I speculate that Bloodstone flew east and north and ended up at the tip of Westeros. From there, his dragon would have literally been Lightbringer, fire from the sky, a river of flame coming out of the darkness, burning the dead, saving humanity. Danny will do the same. She will pass beneath the shadow and finally understand her purpose. Her dragon will be Lightbringer come again and she will be the savior from the north. The Starry Wisdom Cult speaks for an entity that has a preference for fire. The others speak for an entity that is opposite to that one. So in a sense, Melisandre's religion is correct. But even she misses the fact that this is, in fact, a game and has always been a game. Larger forces using smaller forces as pawns. This is the hierarchy of their reality, and therefore a perfect contrast to the Game of Thrones. What does the Church of the Starry Wisdom want? To win.
Hi guys, thanks for watching this video. If you like this channel, feel free to subscribe and also please like the video. If you want to support this channel, please consider checking out my Patreon. I also want to give a special thanks to two patrons in particular, WKC and Trini Girl. Every one of my supporters is greatly appreciated and I couldn't do it without you. Thank you so much. <laughs>